welcome to Sarah Stamping Retreat. Today we're going to have a bit of a play with the stash from New Creative Essentials magazine with Mental Health UK and I thought in the spirit of mental health we are just going to have a play because I think that craft is so good for your mental health and it's nice sometimes just to have a play and do what we fancy. So we're going to play with some different card shapes, some different stencil techniques but it's all just about having fun really. I truly believe that having fun crafting for me personally is one of the best things for my mental health. So let me just show you the kit a second. So we've got this flower die, so that's two pieces, you've got the outline and this inside piece, you've got this outline of the leaf and this inside piece and this all comes free with the Mental Health UK craft magazine. So you get a magazine full of projects showing you how to use these things as well. And then we've got this lovely stencil which I'll be using today. We've got this stamp set. So there's some really big stamps on there. You've got this big be kind with the flowers that we're going to use later. We've got this enjoy life piece. Focus on the good, nice flower vase and then some more sentiments and little embellishments and then we've got this gorgeous paper pack which actually I'm not going to touch on today I'm only going to use the non-consumables but it's really really pretty so I'm just going to show you so that if you decide to purchase this magazine you know what you're getting and see they're absolutely gorgeous and then that starts again there so you've got them all twice so I'm going to start off with a circle card so I've got two six inch circles here from Coastal Cabana Cardstock from Stampin' Up. Then this Pink Melon Mambo one is five and a half inches. And this one, which is Coastal Cabana again, is just over five and a quarter of inches. And then I'm going to start off with this huge Be Kind set. And because it's such a big stamp, I'm going to use my stamp positioner. I always find it easier to use a stamp positioner with really huge stamps. So if I'm heat embossing, I always like to just run my embossing buddy over the top before I heat emboss because it just helps to stop your embossing powder from sticking places you don't want it. And then I'm just going to cut my stem with my verse marking. And I'm just going to repeat that one more time just to make sure we've definitely got a really good impression. And then I'm going to do that again just on this smaller circle. So I'm just going to make sure that that's going to be in the right place before I put it down. So I'm just going to ink that up again. So then I'm going to pour gold embossing powder over this. I'm using the antique gold embossing powder from Altenew because it's a really nice fine one. There's a lot of detail on this so you do want a nice fine embossing powder. And then while I'm at it I'm going to do the white one as well. And then I'm going to use my heat tool to melt the embossing powder on both of those. So now I'm left with this piece which will go on the card and this piece which I'm going to colour. So then because it's heat embossed it doesn't matter if we use watercolour markers or alcohol markers so I'm going to use a mixture. I'm going to use this Stamping Right marker in Melon Mambo to, to go with this here and then I'm also going to use these markers so I've got Copic Chow markers, I've got V15, G14, R85, VG49 and BG34 and I'm just going to create like a little kind of colour palette up here because I'm going to cut it out just for reference so that I can kind of see what colours I'm using as I'm using them.
amount of time to colour, I think that's intentional in that colouring is obviously a really mindful activity and so that in itself will help your mental health to colour. So I'm just going to cut it out and then I'm going to paper piece all of the cut pieces onto here. So each piece that I cut out, I'm going to glue on. And obviously I don't need to cut out like these swells and things because those are already on my base. So you can see I've put that one on there. All these pieces are going to need to be cut out separately but most of the rest can stick onto this ring so it can be cut out as one big piece and then I'll cut out the bee and the kind separately. I'm just going to stick on each piece as I go until I've completed the whole panel. So then here we've got a cut and coloured piece. I think that looks really pretty and it gives it that extra kind of like bit of dimension as well because it's kind of laid on top of the cardstock. And there's a few bits around that I have not cut out because they were so tiny. So I'm actually just going to colour those in on the green. And obviously the reason that I didn't colour them all on the green is that it distorts the um, colour a little bit but I think when it's just such tiny bits like this you don't even really notice so I think it's fine. So then I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer and I'm just going to line this up at half an inch and then I'm going to just score that half an inch and then making sure that this side is parallel so I'm just lining it up along this line. I'm just going to cut this at half an inch on the other side and then I'm just going to pop some glue above here and then I'm going to line up this one on top to make our card blank. So that's our card blank and then I can layer these pieces on top. So then I'm just going to pop this one on as well. And then I'm just going to finish off by adding some, a few gold gems on. So then we've got this gorgeous card as our first card. And that will fit into a 6x6 six six envelope. So then for my next card, I'm going to create like a wraparound card. So this piece of cardstock is five and a half inches by 11 inches and that is the Coastal Cabana cardstock from Stampin' Up. This piece measures three and an eighth inch by five and a quarter and this one's the same size and that one's Fresh Freesia and Pool Party both from Stampin' Up. So the first thing we're going to do is use the stencil that was included in our set to add some detail to these. So I'm going to take this down to my scrap paper and I'm going to pop the tape reasonably close to the cardstock that I'm trying to ink on because then hopefully it will keep the cardstock in place as well. You see that's not like moving around easily. I obviously don't want to put the tape on the cardstock because I want to ink all over it. So I've got the Fresh Freesia ink so it would be tone on tone and I would usually use a bigger blending brush than this but all my bigger ones are in my bag ready for a class so I'm just going to use what I've got on hand. So then you can see we've got this lovely pattern on here. So then because I've only got the one brush on hand I'm just going to make sure there's no more ink on there which you can see there's not already anyway. And then I'm just going to take a water wipe and just gently go over my stencil to make sure there's no more pink ink on it so that I don't ruin the next one. And then I'm just going to put my pool party piece under and then stick that back down and I'm going to do exactly the same with the pool party. But I'm actually going to use the Coastal Cabana ink with this just because I wanted a bit more of a contrast. So then here are my two inked up pieces. So then the next thing I'm going to do is create my card blank. So I've got this piece which is 11 inches by 5 and a half inches. And I'm going to score it at 3 and 3 eighths. And I'm going to spin it 
and score it at three and three eighths again. So in this piece in the middle is four and a quarter, so it will go in a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card length, but then these pieces we're going to cut down. So what I want to do is just make a little mark at one and a half inches with a pencil on each side of my card and then one inch from the edge at the bottom. I'm going to bring in my trimmer. If you've got a trimmer like this you could actually do the scoring and the trimming on the one thing. I prefer to use my scoreboard because it gives a bit of a deeper score. If you don't have a scoreboard then this do just great. So I'm lining up this score line here and this um, line that I've just marked on my paper and I'm just going to cut across there. So we're just cutting across. And then I'm going to join up the mark that we did here with the mark that we did here. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to line up this score line and this mark that I made. I'm going to cut across. And then I'm going to just line up those two marks. And then I can fold those in. So then I want these pieces. So I want the pink to go on this side and the green to go on this side. So what I'm going to do, because I want to cut this so that it fits nicely in here. So I want to use the line that I have cut on here to make sure that I get the line nicely on my card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the top and the bottom edges are even. And then I want to line this up so that this just meets the edge. I've, I've left it, you can see, just a teeny tiny bit over because my pencil mark's going to be a little bit away from the line. And then I'm just going to draw a line just down there. And just down here. And then I can use that line as my cutting line. I'm going to do the same on here as well. So I'm going to line it up so it's equal from the top and the bottom so that I know it's landed in the right place. And then I'm just going to draw and draw. So then I'm just going to use those pencil lines just to cut along. So then you can see that piece fits nicely onto there and this piece fits nicely onto here. So I'm going to glue those pieces on. So then I use the same colours as the last card to colour this in and then I just used like a very pale pink for the back of here and some grey to outline it. And I'm just going to add that on here, but I want it to act as like a closure, so I only want it to be stuck onto here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that my foam pads only go to this side of the line. And I'm going to keep checking just to make sure that it's definitely going to cover it. So we've got this cute card, and this can come open like this. And then when you put it back together, it just slides together like that and this keeps it closed. So then I'm just going to finish it off with some of these gold gems. So there's the finished card. So then for my final card, I've got a five inch square card blank made of Coastal Cabana cardstock that I've just cut this circle out of here. And I want to use some embellishment mousse to go over that. Obviously I don't want it to go through the hole, so I'm going to put my scrap paper through the hole and then I'm going to put another piece of scrap underneath so that I'm not ruining my work surface. And then I'm just going to move these pieces of tape. And then I've got this embellishment mousse in aquamarine from Tony. A nouveau embellishment mousse. So I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm just getting that up. It's a little bit crumbly so I'm just kind of like mixing it about because it is quite an older one. And then I'm just going to take a little bit on my knife 
and I'm just going to kind of press that through and spread it a bit like butter through that stencil. So now that's all covered, I can lift up the stencil and the stencil has to go in water straight away because otherwise that is going to ruin the stencil. I'm going to wash this straight away as well and then I'm just going to run my finger along these edges because that will just flatten off the edges because I don't want these bits to dry hanging over the edge and then I've got a rough looking edge. So then I'm going to leave that until it's dry. Then now that our card front's dry, you can see that it adds that lovely shine texture to the card front. So I'm just going to finish off the card. I've got a piece of fresh freezer cardstock here from Stampin' Up. And then I've got the happy birthday sentiment from the stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp that a few times on some scrap paper just to prep it first. And then I'm going to use my scissors to cut that out. And then I've cut out all these pieces with the die set. So background of this flower is from Melon Mambo cardstock and this piece is from Fresh Freesia. And then here I've got Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay. I glue those bits together. And so then I'm going to pop this sentiment up in there. And then I'm going to pop this up as well. I obviously don't want the um, foam pads to go over the circle, so I'm actually putting them on the um, card blank instead. And there's our card, final card finished. So now there are our completed cards using a whole bunch of techniques. I really hope you like them. Let me know which is your favourite in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate you clicking like below. And you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press the bell button and select all, then YouTube will also notify you when I have a new video available. All of the products that I've used for today's cards are listed in the description below and there's also a link there to my blog where you can find a picture supply list if that makes it easier to find what you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me today, I hope to see you again soon.